to my channel, Flame of a Four. In this video, we're gonna show you 10 things you need to know so that you can 3D print really well. So I'm quite new to 3D printing myself. I've got most of my top tips from 3D Prints SOS. If you haven't seen his channel, please go check it out. He's really good. He's also on Facebook, so you can contact him there as well. Go check him out. His link is gonna be down in the channel description. So check that out, and then you can go find some things out from an experienced person. But I'm showing you as a novice, and I've done 10 points. So if you wanna know the 10 points that we've got listed that we have, you just need to go down, check the channel description. Again, in there is gonna be time frames of where we talk about those things. So you can skip straight to it from there, from this video, and then you will be able to watch what you want to know from there. But step one, now that you've got your printer all set up and printing, is to do the test print. That's step one. So we're gonna go and talk about that right now. When you have your bed level, you should have your print coming out like this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just on the surface. It's done a little spool of, uh, you know, filament just there on the edge. And, you know, it will start to build up. If, if it starts to drag and pull at this stage, it's something wrong. Stop the print, start again. If it's looking smooth and it starts to build the honeycomb up in sections and, you know, it's starting to look like a really good 3D print like this, then you know that you have done a marvelous job at leveling the bed and having all your settings great. So as you can see, it's just blitzing through these stages. It's making the honeycomb center really nicely. It's telling you how much time you left, have left. We've got it set to 200 on the nozzle, 60 on the bed, and that is absolutely fine for what we need. It's going around, it's doing the layers, it's not splitting. It's just coming out how you want it to come out. So you need to make sure your first print comes out perfectly. If you get this right, guys, then your printing stages from the next bits are going to be absolutely an absolute doddle to do. So you want to make sure it's looking good. It's now coming up to the final stages where it's just finishing off doing the final coats. You can kind of see because it's a bit of a see-through filament which comes free with the Voxy Lab uh, that you can see it's in there. We're just going to speed it up here to the finished piece and we'll leave you to enjoy our first print. Okay guys, as you can see here, we've just finished our first 3D print. I've just turned it off so it's not so noisy. With that, you just need to let it cool down. So as you can see here, there is a tiny little bit of the filament where it just finished off. It did a lot, a kind of like a test run around here, but the overall first print looks absolutely incredible. What I'm gonna do, just gonna scrape it off with the scraper that's provided, hoping that it's not gonna be too difficult to get it off. I don't know how easy they are to remove gosh oh there we go so let's have a quick look at it close up so this is the test hook that it asks you to do so as you can see it actually came out pretty good um it feels really solid it did it so well so it sort of just started with the outline of where it was going to do it it started to build up and then inside you can kind of see it kind of made like a honeycomb grid in there and then it finished off by making the top as well but <laughs> this is absolutely insane this printer is really incredible especially for uh, a first time user like myself who has never ever printed anything in his life and this is the first time first set out first print and it's came out absolutely incredible mint it looks really good so you could use this for hanging your keys and such like that like anything that you want to and it's actually really sturdy it's um once it's cooled down it's really good you probably will have to clean the bed off make sure that's all clean use a little bit of acetone to just clean it up with a nice cloth probably a lint free one so there's not any hairs left over but yeah Overall, this model is absolutely incredible and I rate it really highly, so there you go. Okay guys, now that this is all cleaned off, what you just need to do, just scrape off any of the residue that's left on there. So this was kind of like the test bit that it did, as you can see there. Make sure you remove that. Clean it while you can. Don't leave it to um, go off or anything. Use a little bit of the acetone on there to make it nice and clean, ready for your next one. And then that should be ready to go for your next print. 
Okay guys, you now know that the test print has come out perfect, so you think, all right, we're gonna go over and we're going to go and print something. We're gonna download it from Thingmiverse and we're just gonna put it on and we're just gonna print it. It's not gonna work like that. You need to do a couple of things to set it up so that you are ready for when you are printing. So we're gonna talk through that. So that's gonna be step two, is gonna be slicing and putting files onto Cura and how to put them onto your bed so that they will print out properly and also adding, you know, things like structures and things like that, just so that your 3D prints do not get ruined. So we're gonna go talk about that as step two right now. First thing we need to do guys, we need to download or just go on to, should I say, Thingiverse. So Thingiverse.com is going to have all the files in there that you will need to be able to, you know, print stuff. So you can go through it, there's like hundreds and, you know, probably thousands of different designs. So for example, we'll click this fidget spinner. The fidget spinner has a file. So it says on there, look, download file. So you do that, just ignore the pop-up. The pop-up is annoying. Uh, you can X off that, no problem at all. So get rid of that. And then you just need to wait for it to download. While it's downloading, we're gonna pop over and just download Cura because Cura is the program you will need when you are trying to slice your files and they will be where you drag and drop your files when you're trying to make them so that they're ready for 3D printing. So you will need to do that. So just click on download for free. That's all you have to do. Click on that button there and that will start to download. We're gonna go back and find that file we just got from Thingiverse. We're gonna drag and drop it onto the desktop. Really simple, not that hard to do. Once it's on the desktop, just open it up and it will go into a blue folder and extract all the files. I'm gonna show you what an STL file looks like. So when you go in there, grab the files out. So it does it in sections. So all them sections will have to be printed at a later stage unless you wanna lay them out on your bed altogether. Probably wouldn't recommend that. Right, so that's what an STL file looks like. You can't just go and drag this file onto your SD card and print it out. It doesn't work like that. The printer doesn't know what to do. It will just make stuff um, and it will just completely mess it up. It will just it will just not do it. So you want to get off that and open up Cura. So once you've got your Cura opened up and if you want to, the main thing you have to do is you have to set this file up so that it prints out of your printer. Just the same if it was a normal printer and you, know, you just got it and you have to get your computer to to recognize the sizes and the dimensions of your bed. If you wanna know how to do that, go to 3D Print SOS. He has a file in his link description and you can click on that and drag and drop that and add that into your thing. So once you've done that and you have it all set up, if you want me to just go over that with you, I can do another video, it's not an issue. You will have a file loaded here. Look how small it is. So it's done in the scale of a fidget spinner, which is fine. But if you want to make it bigger, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to put it up to say 300%, just so you can get a good idea of how it should look. So this gives you an idea of what it will look like on the bed uh, and how it will print out. So at least you know that it's going to look like that when it's done. If you want to click the top left hand icon, that will allow you to move it around on the bed. As you see, it goes gray if it's off the bed. So you want to make sure that it's pretty much center, but you can move it around so you can add other files onto there so you can print stuff at the same time if you want to. But when you've done that, you can go onto this third tab down and that's rotation. So you can rotate it uh, left to right. You can't really see it moving because obviously it's round and you can move it up and down. You can turn it around, spin it, print it however you want. I would recommend just printing it how it suggests and if it needs supports and add those, but we'll talk about supports in a sec. There are just other multiple things you can do to this. I would just keep to the basics for your first print. As you can see here, I'm gonna now go through what you would see if you were setting your printer up. So as I said, if you go to 3D Prints SOS, he has this preformed all ready to go, uh, so you can put it in. But if you want to copy the settings, make sure you do that. As you saw there, there was a brim, so that'll print a, a 20 millimeter brim before it starts to do your print, so you can make sure that your prints come out perfect. Uh, we've got the printing temperature at 200, the bed temperature set to 65. It's got the infills. Uh, it's showing you about the shell, that the layer height is set to 0.2 millimeters. Just copy these settings and you will be fine. I'll put these settings again also hopefully with a link in the channel description so you can check that out. When you're happy with it, click the button slicing as it's just done there. It will tell you how long it's going to take. So it's 1 hour 43 minutes. You can preview it so it will let you see it. And then you can bring the 
tiny tab down on the side to sort of like show the layers of how it's going to go from the bottom all the way to the top until it does its perfect finish. So that is what it will look like. Right, so let's go and do something a bit more complicated, something that would need some structure. So I'm going to go back to my Abra and use that. So we're going to open up the file. So click the STL file, load that in. As you will see, it will load it in micro. We're just going to make it loads bigger. With the second tab down again, we're going to change it to 300%. We're going to go be even bigger and do it at 500%. And then just so for the purposes of the video so you can see it, we're going to ramp it up to 800% just so you guys can see what it looks like on the bed itself. So we, we're using the icons down the bottom. You'll see here underneath the red parts are the parts where the print is not going to touch the bed. So it's not touching the bed, so it will need support, especially for the chin and the hand. As you can see, the hand is on his face. There is no way of that printing without it throwing out loads of the filament and not printing anything at all so the supports are, need to be added for that and just rotating around so you guys can see right so once we've finished rotating around so you guys can get an idea of it you need to go into your settings you want to lock the model into place if you can that just means you can't edit it by accident go in there and you want to just scroll down until you find something that says support. As you can see, mine is already clicked, but I'm gonna unclick it and click it again just so you guys can see what you would need to do. And then add in the supports. We'll add the supports underneath all the print that doesn't touch the bed that needs that bit of extra structure for when you're printing. Right, so once you've done that, that will generate. You wanna just come out of that, so X out of it, and then slice it again. You have to slice it twice. Uh, just so it will show and then now it's going to take eight hours and ten minutes to print this so it's quite a long time It's going to use 82 grams of filament and 27.47 meters um, Of the filament so there you go So it gives you an idea of how much it's going to use and whether you've got enough and it's really good Right, so now it's done that you can you kind of see up and down here again using this little toggle how much of this is going to print and where the supports are going to come so this will print these supports for the hand to be built onto and then when it's printed out you can just snap them off and throw them away and then you use a Stanley blade to just kind of clean up any of the edges and such so we're just going to turn it around and slice it again so it give you a bit more grayscale so you can see as it builds it from the bottom it will build them structures and that brim around the edge so the 20 millimeter brim will be your test support so you keep an eye on it as it's printing and then as long as you know that the first couple of layers are coming out perfect you will have an amazing 3d print as you can see in the bottom right hand corner it says save to file so you can save it to your desktop put it onto your sd card later if you pop your sd card in now then you, it will say save to removable drive all you need to do is pop that removable drive onto uh, your printer after you've printed it onto your SD card and then load it into your printer and it will print out with all your settings perfectly. Right guys, you now know step one and step two. Step three is going to be bed leveling. So bed leveling is probably one of the most important parts that you can do and we are going to go talk about that in just a sec. What I want to show you guys on here real quick is you can do it two ways. So there's one way where you can get the piece of paper and slide it underneath which is what we're going to talk about. The other one is where you do it when you've put a brim onto your uh, 3D print that you can adjust it while it's printing so that gives you some time to be able to do the prints and figure out if it's squishing it down too much or whether it's too high and it's not got that right level when you are printing. So we'll talk about that right now. Right, so let's look at bed leveling. So with the bed leveling on here, you need to make sure that it's level. What I'll do is I will switch it on in a second just to show you guys how I level my bed. What I'd recommend doing is taking this and doing a little chart to remind yourself what way goes up and what way goes down. It's pretty much the same on each of them, but you will not believe how helpful it is to have something like this just in front of you here while you're leveling, just to remember what way is up and what way is down when you're doing it, because you, when you're trying to do it in a hurry when it's laying down the first print, sometimes you kind of tend to forget. If your bed is started to raise like this on the corners and it's not level at all, then you can go get these little, um, clips here there i got a whole pack of these for one pound from my local b&m store so cheap it only comes with two here and i found that when it gets hot it hot it does warp in there and what i want to do is if you just get these little clips and put them on 
then we will hold the bed nice and flat. So you can put one on each corner. What you want to be careful of, guys, when you do do that, is that when the extruder comes across and it will do its zeroing here, it will hit down onto that. And if you haven't set your prints to print, say, roughly in the middle or you're doing it too close, then it will drag across and it will hit these. So my recommendation is to put these on the sides like that. Let's just put that on and then pull it back so that it's not too far. It won't go any further than that. As you can see, that's as far back as it will go. So these clips will not hit here. So you just want to be a bit sensible about where you're putting them and making sure that the extruder doesn't come into contact with it when it's trying to zero itself out on every single print that you do. So making sure that it's level is the best thing to do. And we're going to just quickly switch it on. And then we'll talk about how I level it ready for when I'm going to do my 3D print. Right, so now that the 3D print is just warming up nicely, what you need to do is just go over to control. And then you need to go to auto home. So auto home will take it straight back to where it should be once it's all set up. So if we just click on that, you'll see that everything will just try and go back to the position it should do when it was uh, ready to start its print. Once it gets down to where it needs to be, it will just come back onto the screen. You want to, because at the moment you won't be able to move the bed at all because the bed is now locked into place because it's zeroed on home. If you go down here, preheat PLA, what that will do is that will preheat the bed and the uh, filament inside. So if you go to pre preheat PLA, then you can hear it starting up. My fan's a little bit noisy, but it's not too bad. Once that's all heated up nicely, guys, what will happen is that will just kind of put the bed at the position it's going to be in. Because when it gets warmer, sometimes that can affect, uh, you know, the leveling of the print. So once you get it nice and hot, you will be ready to do that. So I'm setting mine to 200 inside the nozzle and then 60 on the bed. And that is absolutely ample enough to be able to print out on this. So as you can see there, guys, I have my up and down here just to remind me where zero is. You will need to go onto this and you will need to go through here. And you can see there's a quite a few options. As you go up here, there will be one that says disable stepper. Disable stepper is disable in this bed so we can move it around. So if you click on that, then it now allows me to move the uh, stepper bed backwards and forwards so that I can begin my leveling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right in that corner and then I'm going to tell you the noise that you want to hear. So at the minute, I'm just going to put that piece of paper underneath and as you can feel, it's quite loose. Um, and then by pressing, turning this around, that will go, if I turn it to the right, it will go down, turn it to the left, it will go up. So you want to just put the piece of paper underneath until it starts to grip onto the paper. And then as you can see there, it's got the paper. So it, I could leave the paper on there, it will hold the paper, but keep pulling it out and it makes a noise. I don't know if you can hear it, I'll just be quiet for a second. And then the more you go down, the more it will grip it and the more of a noise it will make. So if we go up, as you can see, that has that locked. That's too tight. So what you want to do, you want to do it down enough so it makes kind of like a vibration noise. And then it will feel like that. So then, as you can hear, it's just got the paper enough that you are set to 0.01 millimeter. So if I go put it back under again, it will be like that. And that's what you want to do. Then guys, it's really simple. All you need to do is pull the bed out, bring it across, pull the bed back, adjust it so that it does that on that corner pull it forward and then make sure that this corner is level and then you just want to pull this across you want to put this underneath adjust the back one and make sure that's level once you have that in place what you can do is you can then test to make sure that the print's coming out okay if it isn't then you can cancel it so as you can see on this here if i want to i can go back i can say for it to print and then I can have it just print anything I want to. So uh, most of my stuff that goes to print out on here is, you know, set to be able to do a brim. So if I just tell it to do something like the utility pin, I'll tell it to do that. 
it will heat up. It shouldn't take long before it goes to print and then it will start to come out. And what I'll do is I will show you how to cancel the print when you're not happy with it. So we'll do that as soon as it starts to print. Right, so the 3D printer is now getting ready. It's zeroing itself off, ready to do the, uh, the brim of the print before it does the original print that it's going to do. It will do a nice test piece. It will bring that over. The bed's not probably leveled correctly, but I just want to show you what to do when it starts to do its print. So it's trying to lay the print down now, which is absolutely fine. And just say, you know, I was happy and I'm like, oh no, you know, the print's not coming out all right. What you can do, all you can do is you can pause it and then it will set it back to zero. Or if you want to, you can just stop the print. So I'll stop the print there. Cancel printing, yes. And then it will just stop and it will return back to home. So as you can see there, it's probably a little bit too high. You do get provided in this kit a, a scraper and then all of a sudden it will just start to take the temperature right back down once it's done that. And then I'll just get this off so you can see. It started to do the print, but as you can tell there, when it first comes out, it starts to come out you know, it's got excess stuff in the end of the extruder and it doesn't look great. So that is why you need to do your brim and your test piece to make sure that it starts to come out well. But as you can see, it had no problem coming out, which is not a problem at all. So the better your level of bed, the better your print will be. I'll show you an example on these that I've just printed out. So if you can see on this, this is kind of how you want it to look. So this is the brim that it prints before it starts to print the product itself. If you can get this piece to come out lovely, then your print will come out lovely. That is why it's so important that you make sure that you put a brim on your, on your prints and then you can get your level and then you can make sure that all your prints come out really good every time. So that's just an example. And then it looks lovely underneath like that. And that is how you want it to look. Right guys, now you know the three steps of how to do the 3D printer setup. What we want to do is talk about step four. Step four is going to be the slipping of the extruder at the top here. Uh, the first one where the filament comes into it and sometimes it slips. And then when it slips, it doesn't put through enough filament into the nozzle of the um, other extruder and then what happens is it tends to miss some and then as it's printing out it will do layers where on this one it was uh, printing and then some of the layers just started to just miss and then eventually it just started to fall apart also when i did my first print which was, which was this one it didn't come out very well because i forgot to add the structure so i don't want you guys to go waste your 3d filament i want you to learn how to do it so what we're going to do we're going to talk about uh, the filament coming through here what you can do to stop it slipping on your device and we're going to talk about that as step four so let's get to it so slipping as it prints is due to this piece that spins around in there. I do use a toothbrush if you want to just kind of clean out any of the excess that it's decided to pick up. It's good for cleaning uh, around the area, anything um, that may get in the way of it. So the most important part is the filament is feeding into this feeder and if you pull this handle here you can see that the filament will go loose and that is what you want. But with the plastic one that I tend to to start with. Uh, it was slipping the most on this, where this was spinning around on there, where that was spinning around, you see that bit there? As it was spinning, what it was doing, it was catching. But it wasn't catching um, mainly because it was all set up wrong. It was catching because the nozzle temperature was either too close to the bed, so it was backing up and then it was slipping, or there was too much um, there was not enough temperature melting the filament as well, which means it was coming out quite hard and then it was pushing back and slipping. But I upgraded because on these, at the back of there, where it goes, where the filament goes through, it wears the plastic out. And when it wears the plastic out, it doesn't go through very well. I found that there's been no slipping since I upgraded this, so that has been the best thing to do. If you want to take your um, hose off, you just need to take off your little pin clip like that. And then you just need to push in the, the blue part of the nozzle. I don't know, yours is probably black. And then you can pull the hose out. And as you can see, with the hose out, you can see the filament going into uh, you know, the feeder itself there. 
you want to make sure you've got nice cable ties around here so that it feeds through nicely and that it doesn't slip out. You want to make sure that this pipe doesn't come out and also that this is in here into the extruder itself really nicely as well. You want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Also on here there is a little turn wheel and as you can see if I push that in that wheel turns nice and freely uh, around like so. And you want to make sure that when that is feeding through there, that turn wheel there on the inside next to the one that grips it is running freely. If it isn't, then go get your Allen key, loosen that off a little bit, and then it will feed through nicely. But for me, the only option I had was to upgrade it to this one. And if you want to um, know how to do this bit, what we'll do, we can take that apart when we go on about talking about how to unblock the extruder once it's blocked up. Okay, guys? Right guys, now you know the steps one to four, we are gonna go on to step five. And step five is going to be the temperature of the filament coming out. So if the temperature is too hot and the filament's coming out of the extruder, what will happen is it will squish and it will just have like a melted section where it just looks like the bottom is completely uh, flat and melted. And then we have it where it's too cold, where the filament comes out and it's not sticking well enough and it's just coming out in lines and it's not melted. So we're gonna go talk about that right now. Right, we're just gonna talk about the temperature, whether it's too hot or too cold, on how your print will come out. So if your print is too cold, then most of the, most of the likely that you will get this stringy type of effect here. I don't know if you can see that without it not coming out. So it will come out where it kind of looks like it does in the tube because it's just not good enough because it's just not warm enough and you get quite a bad line in and it misses some steps as well. So if your temperature is not hot enough, then it will not melt it and it will block the extruder as well. So, but if it is too hot, then you will get a melting formation. And then if you get a melting formation, you will get something that looks like this at the bottom of this print here. As you can see at the bottom it is properly melted. And then I've set it up so that I've changed the temperature. So then the rest of the print comes out really nicely. But if it's too hot, then you will get that melted sensation at the bottom and then your whole print will come out flat and it will just look absolutely horrible. Right, so what I wanna do is talk about how you can adjust that. So say if you was doing a print and then you set your print up to come out, what you would do, say we just do the test hook, that will be set to a certain temperature already. So that's gonna to go to 200 and then 60 on the bed. So say if you wanted to bring this up, what you need to do is keep your printing speed uh, a little bit lower. If you keep your printing speed a little bit lower, say if I turn that down to 90, that will help stop the uh, slipping on there as well. So, and, and if I go, I'll keep that at 90. If you go down to here and say, turn your nozzle temperature, say it was uh, slipping and not coming out very well and the temperature wasn't good enough, then what you could do is just turn it up by about five degrees, try that, see how you get on. And then if not, take it up to another 10 degrees, click on that and then that will do that. Also, if it's not sticking to the bed very well, maybe take it up to like 65 or something, click that in, keep the fan speed at the same. If you find that it's on the bed here and it's too close and you don't want to adjust it while it's going around live, what you can do is you can offset the extruder up and down. So if you went to uh, on the Z offset on the extruder and went to minus two, it will take it down by 0.02 millimeters, so it will squish it a bit more. But if you wanted to find that it was too close to the bed, turn it up to about two, set that in place, and then that will raise it up a tiny bit enough so that your prints come out perfect. Another fault that you can get on your 3D printer is the extruder blockage. So when the extruder is coming out, it gets blocked up, it's probably too close to the bed, or there is old filament in the nozzle. We're gonna talk about how we can sort that out so that you guys don't have to worry about your prints coming out horrible. Uh, there was a couple of things that can happen on that. We will get into it in a second, but just be careful when printing. Make sure you take your filaments out if you can. If you are doing a different color, then just try and maybe clean the extruder every time you do it, just so that you get better prints when you are 3D printing. So we're gonna get into extruder blockage right now. 
One of the main issues that you might find is that your nozzle on your extruder is blocked. So if your nozzle in here is blocked, this could be due to two things. One of my main problems was that this pipe here wasn't down enough inside the extruder and what happened is it was gathering uh, filament in the bottom there and it was pushing this pipe up so that every time I changed over my filament it was pushing it up and then causing slipping, causing issues, causing bad prints. So what you need to do if you're going to do this, I would recommend turning it off. I'm only doing this because uh, I've had a few attempts at doing it and I kind of know what I'm doing at this stage. You want to take two of the screws out of the back of the cover. You want to be really careful. And then what that will do, that will loosen the casing to your extruder so we can find out what's going on in there. My one isn't blocked, but I'm just showing you for the purpose of the video. And then this thing that covers up the cover with the fan in, you just need to take that off carefully. It is just pushed into the back here. And once you've got it off and it's got two little sort of tabs there that keeps it in place you can't move this very well just because of where it is if I just slide that across it will allow you to see it a lot better I'm going to come around and show you the rest of it so on here let's just bring it over a little bit more so you can see on here is where your pipe goes in and then there is a clip on there you might not have a clip I'll put a clip on mine it seems to help it a lot and then you can just take that off so if i just take that off there as you see the best thing to do is to get it hot enough so what i'm going to do i'm going to set the control and then i'm going to preset the pla so that it will heat up the bed and it will heat up the filament inside and what that will do that will allow me to pull that out nicely so once that's heated up that will come out and then I'll be able to pull that up. You need to push this down to allow the, the pipe to be removed. If the pipe only kind of goes one way, so once it's in and down, it's held in there and it won't really come out. So what I found is to take it off here first and then to just pull that off there, just take that off first. And as you can see, that's like this. And then with the feeder, just push that in so when that's pushed in, that will allow you to pull the filament out. As you can see, the filament will come all the way out. Don't pull it all the way. Just pull it till you get to there. And then you'll see what's going on. So you can see there that that's where it's all melted. And what you need to do next is you will need to take this off of there. So we're going to talk about how to do that now. Inside your kit, you should have a spanner like this. Like I said, do that with it off. Uh, you don't need to have it running like I have and just undo this top part here and just get it it's, it's not too bad and not too difficult to loosen it off get it to a point just remember the bottom is going to be really hot the top section here it shouldn't be hot at all so you should be fine so you just need to undo that and as you can see I'm just trying to show you guys so you know what's going on with it once that's off, you will then be able to expose the hose. The hose should pull out and it should have all the filament. So if that is on, if the, if the filament is on the outside, you know that it's not sealing properly or correctly. And as you can see, this is the hot filament here. And this is the stuff if we put it out of the hose that backs up. But you want to make sure it's not backed up around the outside. As you can see, my one wasn't backed up around the outside. So that makes it a lot easier. And the only way to get this hose out of here, I'm just going to pull it all the way out of these cable ties because I can put it back in quite easily, is to pull it one way. So it only goes up one way. So if you push that in like that, that will then start to come off and you can do it. But the best way to do it is to push that in and take it off the other side because it feeds through one way. So it's, no, it's a non-return. So once it goes through there, it shouldn't return. So it's a non-return valve. So just slide it all the way through for your maintenance, and there you go. So as you're thinking now, all right, so what if it's blocked, what do we do? 
This was the blockage from when I couldn't get a print to come out really well. That's all the filament that was in there stuck in behind. There is a way you can do it. I found uh, if you want to, you can put filament in the hole while it's hot. And then you can just poke it in there and then dab it around a little bit. And then it will stick to it. And then it will take out all that goo that's left in there. As you can see, all that is blocking it up. And then you want to make sure that you get rid of it. Another way that I managed to get it out of there as well was to use a really long cocktail stick like this, a long cocktail stick, and then pop that in the end and just put it in there, wiggle it around nicely, not too much. And then what it does is it tends to get out any of it. You want to look in the hole really to make sure that that's nice and clean. You can use both ends, it doesn't really matter. The end of it could possibly be, be blocked as well. So they do have in the kit a tiny little needle and that tiny little needle is really good for cleaning it out. So you will get that in the kit as well. So that's a needle, as you can see mine has gunk on it, I haven't cleaned it off yet. But that's really good for pushing that all the way through and getting the tip of that nozzle really, really clean. So. We're going to talk about putting it all back together now and then we'll show you what you need to do to make sure that that doesn't block up again. Right, so now that we've let it all cool down again, we need to start assembling it. All of that leftover filament that was in there is all cleaned out. So you need to go pop back on your top section there. So we'll just quickly put that on. So make sure that it's nice and level and then do that up with by hand as far as you can go. And as you can see on the bottom of this kit, it came in the upgrade kit, this one, it has a little bit of stuff on the bottom to seal it in. So remember, don't push down because you don't want to push on this because you don't want your nozzle to get hit on the bed. So just hold it steady and just tighten it up. It doesn't have to be overly tight. You just want it to be tight enough that it's not going to move. So there you go. And then we need to put the pipe back in. So but we want to be careful with this, guys, because you want to make sure that when this pipe goes down, that it's going all the way down and that it's touching the bottom flat so that none of the filament will get up behind here. So when you're putting it in, make sure you can feel the base of the, of the bottom of the extruder. So as you got it in there now, what we're going to do, we're just going to make sure, hold this up, that is touching the base. As you can feel, it can't go any further, so it is. I'm gonna lock it in place with my pin, like so, like that. Keep it in place with the pin. And then when you're putting the fan section back together, you wanna make sure that none of your cable ties like this have fallen down. You just need to get your hose, and then you just need to feed that back through your cable ties. They should be loose enough that they're holding the cable, but not enough that it's kind of stopping it from feeding through the filament. So at the minute, we'll just leave them like that. We will come back and then we'll do uh, them in sections. But for now, what we need to do here is just click this back into place. So make sure that the cables don't get caught up. And then you wanna make sure that this sits where it's supposed to go. That clips on like that. And then the other side, we need to go put the screws in place. I just need to screw up the back. Just be careful when you're doing this not to put them in the wrong place or to catch any of the wires. Then you just need to screw that back up, like so. And then there's just two that hold this back plate on. And then that holds the cover on for the extruder. There you go. And so that's now all done. The next thing we need to worry about is the filament. So this is the old filament. If I try and pull that back through there, it will get stuck and it will go horrible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull that through enough to there, because there's quite big there. And I'm gonna cut it straight using this. So just to prepare cutters or something just to make it so you can you know pull it through nicely. Push that in and pull that through. And that will go all the way through. Make sure when you've done that, your filament doesn't get tangled because tangled filament is real bad, really, really bad. And you wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. Because tangled filament equals bad prints, 
because it will snag and it will slip. So store that somewhere safe. If you can, make sure you store it with the um, in a cool, dry place so that the filament doesn't get damp or anything like that. You want to make sure you keep it in a nice warm room, which is what we do here. So I'm just going to pop that down out the way for the moment. If you want to, you can put them back in the boxes when you're done and then store them in that, because it's probably better. I'm going to load in this black filament for my next print. And I'm just going to show you how I do that. With these, you want to make sure that all those cable ties are still in that hose. And we will sort those out lastly. There we go. So just pop them on there. And then we just need to cut the packaging open. Be careful not to cut the filament because these are vacuum sealed. Let's put that out of the way. And this is just PLA and it says it's 1.75 and it's just black and the temperature is 200 to 230 so it's a lot of it's a bit it's a bit of a higher temperature than the usual ones so as i take the first reel of the filament out what you'll notice on this is that it's really bent up like that so you want to cut it so that it's straight because you don't want to be putting filament in when it's bent because that will block up anything that you've previously done when you're putting it on the reel, make sure you put it up there so that it's nice and loose. Bring it down, pull your piece through, and then make sure that it goes through that hole. You want to make sure you can see where it's going through so that it goes through there nicely because sometimes it goes at a bit of an angle. Once it starts to go through, stop. Don't let it come out the end because you want to get it inside this pipe. So put your pipe in and then put your little clip on to hold the hose in place and then pull that through so that the filament starts to go through the pipe nicely and until it stops. So there you go. And then what you need to do is then sort these out so that what I tend to do is so that the cable tie smooth end is on the pipe and not the rough part of it because the other part is just the cabling and then section these out evenly across so that the pipe is in place and there you go guys ready for the next print the, the best thing i would do is to clean up my bed before i print anything else so i'll go take my acetone which is from poundland i'm just going to show you take my cotton pads just put a couple of little splodges two or three splodges on there and then clean the bed up and then as you can see it kind of almost evaporates in front of your eyes but it's just such a great product to keep everything clean so there you go probably one of the most looked over parts of 3d printing is probably the belt tension a lot of people when i was starting out they were like how do you know whether the belt is tight enough how do you know if it's too loose you know there's belts that run along the top here where the extruder runs backwards and forwards also there is a belt that runs the bottom plate the hot plate here and that needs to be a certain you know a certain tension so that it can print out really well if it's too tight then you've got the chance of wearing your belt and your belt snapping if it's too loose then your extruder can flop around and it can bring the prints out really really horrible so what we want to do is we want to talk about that we're going to get straight into it and that's going to be your next step so we're going to do that right now So I can't find anywhere really online regarding belt tension when I was trying to set mine up. So as you can see here, this is the belt. There's two of them. There's one here and there's also one that runs along inside here underneath there on the stepper. So if I just bring that up real quick, I'll be able to show you guys what it looks like underneath. So let's lift that up. And then underneath here, there are two sides pieces where the belt joins you can't see the other side but it's just under there and it goes around the whole piece there at the top bring that up so it goes along the top there around the edge and then back down here and then if you can see over here there is a piece that you can tension the belt and loosen the belt so if i take it down it will loosen the belt so the belt will be really loose and it's too loose then you'll see it drag under there 
So what you want to make sure is that when you do the belt up nice and tight, there is also another one on the end down here. So it'll be easier to show you. It's, it works the same on both of them but I'll show you on this one. So this belt is set to the tension that's good enough for the stepper to be able to move backwards and forwards nicely. So what I did was adjusted this so that the belt is tight enough that when you grab it, you could twist it halfway. And if you could twist it too far around all the way, then you've got it too loose. So tighten it up a little bit more and make sure that the belt can only twist nicely just about halfway without having to do too much effort. And then that kind of gives you an indication that that belt is not too tight. Uh, you can also hear it by the movement. If it's too tight, you know, this will struggle to move backwards and forwards. If you loosen it, you're about to move it easier. You don't want it too loose because if it's too loose, then the print will shake and then the steps will not go how they're supposed to. And if you've got this too tight, this will always moves constantly as you're making the print. So make sure, like I said, that the belt, twist it. You can't twist it all the way around. You can only twist it halfway. That tends to be a key part of when the belt is in the right place. I hope this helped you guys. There was nothing really out there uh, about belt tensioning to be able to help you. If it's too tight, like I said, it'll be too stiff. You kind of just need to play around with it until it feels good. So if I loosen that off a bit, you'll see the bed can move freely. If you do it too tight, I don't want to break the belt, but you can see it's quite hard to move. The so you want to make sure it's just enough so you can twist this halfway, twist that halfway. You can't do it on there, but you can get an idea that that's too tight. Do it a little bit looser moves nice and free and that's what you want you want to keep it nice and free like that so there you go all right guys so for me on step eight that we're about to do right now step eight is going to be me talking about upgrades so on the top here where the feeder i call this the feeder i don't know if you guys call it the feeder where the feeder feeds the filament in i upgraded mine it cost me 4.99 i have left the link for you for that down in the channel description it's really cheap uh it's such a great thing so on the filament where the filament goes through on the top piece it tends to wear when it's plastic and it kind of gets stuck and there's not really much adjustment you can do on it with the metal upgrade it tends to feed through a lot easier i mean i'm not just saying that you have to go get this some people don't need to get the upgrade on that but it was a great addition for me myself personally to get this upgrade because it was just so good i'm going to talk about that in a bit more detail now so uh, check it out so if you are still having trouble with your 3D printing and you have got slipping and you cannot get it to work, go grab yourself one of these. This is from the end of free, not for the Vox Lab, but it's pretty much the same machine. And this piece of kit is absolutely fantastic. So this is $4.99 and it comes with everything you need. It comes with new pipes, new wheels, new grips, everything that you would like to have on a 3D printer. Uh, I didn't put these end pieces on, I actually upgraded those to a different one, but it's entirely up to you. But I recommend this really, you know, 10 out of 10 for having a really quality 3D print. As you can see, mine is installed up there, so I do have a second one for $4.99, you can't go wrong. You can also get these off Amazon as well. Well, they're like $8.99 on there. I did actually buy one from eBay, it took too long to come. I was like, I really need to get 3D printing. So I bought one from Amazon. So that one's from Amazon, this one's from eBay, exactly the same, does the same job. I highly recommend it uh, if you are struggling like I did. So there you go, guys. Right guys, so bed adhesion is probably another really common fault for printing. So what you want to make sure is that when your print is coming out of the extruder and is going onto the bed, you want to make sure that it sticks to that bed and it doesn't move. So I've been doing 19 hour prints. I've had my printer printing 3D models for seven days straight and it hasn't messed up one time. So it's been absolutely perfect to me. But the first thing when I'm setting up each print, when I'm stopping one, Going on to the next print, the best thing to find out is whether the first few layers are going down onto the bed properly. So you want to make sure that they're stuck. The best thing to do is probably not put anything on there. If you can set it up well enough, this bed is quite capable of just having it on there to sell. People have used uh, masking tape, people have used double-sided sticky tape, hairspray. I'm going to talk to you about what the best things to put on there and I found is good for doing your 3D prints right now. You might be thinking, oh, my print's not sticking, it keeps sliding around. 
you probably have not got your bed level enough it's probably too far away from the bed so it's causing drag so it will drag along if you don't have it set to the right layers then you will end up with something like this where it just splits and comes away so you want to make sure that it is stuck down to the bed properly and that you got the right temperature just mess with your temperatures on your test pieces before you go ahead and do anything one of the recommendations i've got i found double-sided sticky tape works really well when you've got it on the bed if you cover it in the bed where you're going to print and then you peel it off i find that the double-sided sticky tape is a really good adhesion for it to stick your prints to because as you can see i'll just stick this bit down when it's stuck it's actually pretty good and quite solid and it holds them down nicely and once that gets hot it kind of maintains the heat it is a bit of um, a nightmare to get it off after it's heated up because it doesn't come off this easily it's actually quite difficult to get it off and you will have to scrub the bed quite hard so that is a good one if you are really really struggling and you want one to do i've seen people use masking tape so people do use masking tape on the bed you can use that it's not an issue at all to use masking tape the only thing i found with the masking tape is it doesn't really do much for the stickiness of it so i would just recommend getting your bed level and scrap the mask and tape scenario the other thing i've seen people say they've used is hairspray i found that when putting hairspray onto the bed i don't know if you are, are the same once that dries out other than leaving like a sticky residue even though i've got the ultra hold stuff uh it kind of when it gets hot enough it doesn't really leave a sticky residue anymore it goes shiny and then because it goes shiny it kind of ruins the the print and it just leaves a shiny finish and that is not what you want because that is not going to help anything stick so what i would recommend is just getting the bed nice and level taking your time get your temperatures correct making sure that your temperature is high enough and just using the bed itself if you're worried about this moving around and not leveling then just remember you've got your clips that you can use go 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 grab your little clips to hold the bed straight because sometimes they raise in these corners i don't think these two clips are sufficient enough for what we want you can just go grab these little clips they're really really cheap and they will hold the bed level if you are having trouble with your bed just remember if you're printing don't put these clips in an area where the extruder will be printing out any of your designs another good solution is print stick so you can use this to help bed adhesion again i do not recommend having to need to use anything but if you put that on nicely as you can see that leaves a nice sticky residue to help your model stick if that is something you would want to use then you can go ahead and use that as well Okay guys, so step 10, that is step 10 is the last step that we have. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them down in the comment section down below and I will do my best to help you out with my experience of 3D printing. So top 10 is just top tips on what to do when you are 3D printing. So the main things, the top tips are making sure that your filament is coming through here, make sure that it's going through the uh, hose nicely. If you are using double-sided sticky tape, be careful uh, because it leaves a sticky residue on the bottom of things. You can use um, the nail varnish uh, remover to clean it up and stuff like that. I use this nail, um, nail and tip remover here and this is the acetone it's one pound from poundland it's so cheap and then i use these little cotton pads i'm just going to grab them for you guys these little cotton pads and i always use it to clean up the bed and some of the bottom of the 3d prints you want to be careful because it does take off some of the color on the silk 3d prints so you want to be careful on that just pop it on here and then use it to clean your bed. This stuff is one pound and then these cotton pads are like 30p. You can probably get them for like 80p, 30p, whatever ones. They don't have to be brilliant. They're perfect for cleaning up the bed of the 3D printer. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, you want to be careful when things are too hot because if you can see here, this is warped 
and that is just due because I had the extrusion on the extruder on too hot so when you set your temperature on here it was way too hot and on these they always tell you I'll just bring it off they always tell you on here and I print with PLA most of the most of my prints as PLA I haven't actually um, tried anything else I did order some other stuff uh, by accident but I found the PLA the best stuff to come out for me and it tells you on here the temperature of the um, recommendation of printing this so it says on here 190 degrees Celsius to 210 degrees Celsius try and stick to that don't go over that always keep within the margin of that as well so in our next video guys I hope you like the top 10 tips I hope this has helped you 3d print I want to just go through us building this 3d kit bash uh, robot and the upgrades that we're going to be doing to it because it's absolutely amazing piece uh, I haven't talked to you about it in this video just giving you a bit of a teaser keeping them in the background there showing you how to connect him how to print him uh, where to find the files and how to do it and I'm also going to upgrade him so that he has a real camera in his eye as well so I can't wait to do that with you guys if you haven't already please subscribe by clicking down here and I'll see you guys on the next one take care now bye bye